Hey there, and welcome to the second Complete Retouch, Part 3. In this section, we're going to be going over matching the skin tone between face and hand and neck. It's going to be really, really cool and super helpful. All right, well, up until now, we've done a really good job with our retouching. We started off with the Liquify tool, doing a little bit of shaping and a little bit of blemish removal. Then we moved into the more heavy-duty stuff, where we're actually working with the shape and the tone of the head. You know what, and I just saw something right up here that I'm, as we turn these things off and on, maybe you can see it too. There's like a little halo of like head color up there. Okay, I just want to find whichever layer that is. It's this one here. And we'll just grab the eraser tool and erase that away. No bigs. That's like the best part about turning layers off and on. It's like you really, you really notice stuff that should or should not be in your photo. There we go. Okay, so now in this video we're going to be matching our skin color. Okay, so the face looks great. Face is properly exposed. Hand is just, you know, it's too bright and it's kind of the wrong color. So we're going to work on both of those things. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. Group this with itself and we're going to call this uh, color correction. Okay, and in this layer, I'm going to go ahead and grab a Curves Adjustment layer, and we're going to click here and just bring that down a little bit, just like that. Okay, now let's hit com Controller Command I to invert that, and I'm going to use my brush tool to paint white on my layer mask. Again, we just we want the Curves Adjustment layer to only affect this area where his hands are. I'm going to bring this down a little more so I can actually see what I'm doing with my layer mask. There we go. So I'm I'm doing my best job to mask out just his hand. I'll show you guys a couple techniques so you can do this without having to spend like a year of your life on it. All right. Basically, I'm choosing a small brush, and kind of going around all the borders here. I'm not trying to be, you know, perfect as you can see. I'm not zooming in really any further than this. Um, the reason is all this stuff around the edges. I'm gonna actually wind up painting away in just a little bit with a soft, large, round brush. There we go. Alright, so the hand is too light in color. In other words, it's, it's too bright. That's why we're using curves to darken it down a little bit. Okay. There we go. That does not look correct, I know that, but now we have our layer mask in there. I know what, what this layer is going to affect. It's going to affect the hand. Alright, let's go ahead and reset this. Now, I want the highlights to be a little bit darker here. See that the highlights are a little bit bright. So we're going to bring those down a good bit. There we go. Something like that. And I want to bring our shadows a little bit brighter to kind of even out what's going on with his hand and his face. So there we go. Just kind of like making that area darker. And you can see it looks good. Looks a little bit weird on his finger and on the top. So what we're going to do Remember I created my layer mask and I said I was going to paint away a little bit? Well, I don't want to mess with this layer mask because I already have it and it's nice. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to group this layer with itself and then I'll put a layer mask on the group, which basically gives me a layer mask that only affects this layer. So if I want to grab my brush tool and paint black really large at a really low flow on this layer mask, it's going to affect this layer also but I don't have to mess with this layer mask. So it's like I'm adding another layer mask. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just painting black in this area until all the places that are kind of like a little bit weird, like the tip of the finger and whatnot, all those places are going to just be taken care of. All right, so this is before and after that layer mask. Now if I decide I want some of it back, I can go ahead and paint it back and I don't have to be super precise about it because the original layer mask right here, that's still there. I haven't touched it. So working basically, I've got two layer masks for just this one area. Really nice. Okay. Now that looks pretty good. Um, color wise, or sorry, as far as light and dark goes, that looks pretty good. We do want to create another layer for color correction. And this is going to be a color balance adjustment layer. Okay, so color balance adjustment layer. And now, what we're going to do, we have this color balance, like, 
we've used this before. Let's, <laughs> let's just use this as an example. Yeah, that looks great. Um, what we're going to do is copy the layer mask from this curves adjustment layer. Remember this one where we just did this? Okay. We're just going to copy the layer mask from this over to the color balance. And that's so we don't have to paint it in again. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and drag this layer mask on top of this one. Bonk. And you can see it just replaces it. Really nice. And now he's the Hulk just on his hand. All right, let's go ahead and reset this. All right, and we're going to zoom out and kind of see any changes that we may need. Let's see our midtones. Let me see if we put a little bit more red into the midtones. That's looking good. All right, if we put like basically with these, I drag, I just click and drag it left and right. Like, does that make it better or worse? Does that make it better or worse? And usually, you won't have to drag. You won't have to go too far to see like what the image actually needs. All right. Highlight color, I'm going to cool that down a little bit. All right, and our shadows. So in this case it didn't need like a ton of adjustments really. The curves adjustment layer did a lot of our work for us, which is very nice. There we go. All right, so let's see the before and the after. Again, it's not a huge change. Just basically took away a little of the red. Sorry, took away some of the yellow, some of the yellow, and added some red. Okay, now we're going to do another color balance adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and pump this up so I can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to focus this on the neck. So on my layer mask, I need my layer mask to be black. I'm going to hit Controller Command I to invert it. Okay, and now we're going to paint, paint white on just the neck. And again, this is with my brush tool here. All right. There we go. Cool, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's the area that's selected now. Let's go back to our adjustment layer just by clicking right here. You can go from the mask to the layer, to the mask to the layer. We're gonna reset that. And now, it looks a little bit too much blue. So I'm gonna, here in my midtones, we're just gonna click here between the yellow blue. I'm just gonna click the down arrow a couple times. We're just gonna put, take away blue and put more yellow. And then we'll click a couple reds in there. All right, and maybe some magenta. All right. So before and the after with that, we can see. All right, that's light change. You know what, but I think it's a little too saturated. And if it's too saturated, meaning there's too much color, then what we want to do is grab a hue saturation adjustment layer, which allows us to adjust our saturation. Okay. Well, I'm going to use the same layer mask as in this color balance layer, right, for the neck. We already made it. So again, to copy this layer mask to the hue saturation adjustment layer, hold Alt or Option and click and drag from one layer mask to another one. Okay. Now in my hue saturation adjustment layer, check that out. Really easily, I can adjust the saturation of the neck. So I'm just going to use the up and down arrows till we get something. Yep, that looks better. A minus six. See, too much color, just right. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, man, I have no idea what you're talking about. I didn't see the too much color. I guess it looks better now, but I would never even thought to do that. Uh, how do I know how to do that? Well, um, practice helps. Also, sometimes you can just kind of play around and say like, you know, select that area and be like, does this look better? Or does this look better? Or maybe somewhere in between. And eventually you'll get to see what like, you know, like to me, I can see that as, oh yeah, that is too much saturation. See how it looks like there's more color there than the rest of the body. I mean, I exaggerated it, but you know, obviously when you see something like that, that's when you know you gotta take your saturation and bring it down a little bit. All right, and it does help to be zoomed out. Great. 
All right, well, it may not seem like we've done a whole lot with this section, but let's go ahead and look at the before and the after, and I think that you will agree that we actually did some positive changes. All right, there we go. Here's our before and our after. A lot with the hand there, right? In the after, you're just like, yeah, that's how it should look. The before, you're like, whoa, I can't believe it was that far off. And it was. <laughs> anyway, so there we go. A nice before and after to show you guys how we can color correct different areas of a portrait, including the hand and the neck and the face, to wind up looking more similar to each other. All right. Great, guys. That's the end of this section. We'll see you in the next section.